Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Lord of the Rings Rise to War. We're going to be going over the uh, faction changes uh, for the bonuses and the buffs they offer. Um, I thought, it, I don't know, it's just kind of in the mood to do it. And uh, I was able to get a good picture, so we're going to just run over that now. Uh, so just in the last, I would say, two weeks, they introduced these faction trade adjustments. And we're going to go over those. I have played just about every good side faction, with the exception of Lothlorien. Uh, I have yet to play a single, um, I should phrase it, I've yet to play a single evil faction on my primary account. I have one alt um, that I played Rune with, and uh, it didn't play much. I think I played like maybe a week, and then I was just kind of, I kind of just got caught up in my primary as it tend to happen. So we're going to start with evil factions, just my thoughts on them, because I have more experience obviously with the good factions. But um, looking at Variags, the Furtive Mercenary, um, you, I'm glad they didn't just change every single one of them. I'm glad um, some of them that were just buffed, in a sense. I think the, and if I'm, before we get into the nitty gritty, there is a change on how these buffs are now presented to you. They are no longer inherent, meaning active from day one. They actually require a two point investment from your ring and they are achievable once you get to level 30 on the ring. So there is some give and take on these that unfortunately do kind of um, do kind of limit the usefulness because you'll already have to get to that level 30. So you might be X, Y, Z. You might be like uh, so far in your development that really the the buffs that these offer don't aren't worth your time on the a two point investment. Uh, but looking at the Variags, I thought that was a pretty interesting one, and I was glad that they didn't change it, and they just simply buffed it. An additional 10% on EXP gain um, at level, you know, at a ring power of 30, where you're likely to start putting points into just base experience gain. It could easily take this from 25% with the plus 10% in your other ring skill to 35%, and at that point... Um, the nice thing with that is that you can then focus your primary commanders with mind sharpening, but if you have any secondary or, or, or third, you know, third tier commanders that you just like using, but you don't want to invest time in, I, 30, 25% there and 35% with the ring ability for the extra XP, um, I think that's pretty strong because not only are you gaining resources, uh, not only are you gaining the AXP, but you're gaining resources. So it allows you to focus on other tiles and just sweep for your grain. So it's a nice incentive to, um, it's a nice incentive, you know, if you're, if you just need more grain, it's a nice incentive because you'll get bonus XP. If you're looking to, to, to like mock, mock battle in a sense, then you're getting bonus grain. So I think it's a very nifty way of making an already popular faction more popular. And I'm really okay with that because we do need more evil side faction players. And I want to say thank you to all you guys who play evil side um, season after season when sometimes those you're, it's like two full factions of evil if you're lucky, and then there's like you know there's dwarves, Loth, Rohan, Gondor, um, and it's like wow that kind of sucks, but I appreciate those guys who who do that for us. Um, looking at the gun to bad faction trait, I the stores on the thing was always kind of weird for me. I don't know. I feel like they had already buffed it. Uh, I almost felt like they had already buffed it at a base level, and then if you're playing rebuilding glory, you'll get more space from certain keeps. Um, so I don't know. The re I think th th they made it a lot more beneficial with the resource trade rate. Um, this, to me, is something you can use all season long. And I think there's a lot of value in that from a bonus standpoint if you're looking for a two-point investment. Um, if it's something that you're going to taper off on, well, it it's like you can refund it to take the points out. But if it's – I know I feel better about investing in something in the first place if I believe I can use it long term. So – I think being able to have a better resource trade rate and and get more grain or ore or stone or whatever um, is something you can use all season long from developing your settlement to building a fort or um, simply training troops. So I actually really approve of that one too. Uh, the faction trade for Arnor is easily my favorite. Um, I, I didn't mind the construction cost minus 5%, but I really like the Battle Scholar EXP gain from battles. Um, and the reason why is it kind of ties back into the same reason as the Variags. It allows you to um, not only 
stack. I mean, ten percent's pretty solid, but then you get the twenty percent because of the other ten percent bonus. And if you're lucky and you get it, Loth doesn't get to it first. You can get Troll Shaws. That's another f or the um, Stone Trolls. That's another five percent. So. When you add all that together, you're looking at 10% from the Battle Scholar, 10% from the Ring, and 20% is pretty solid. And the nice thing is, is that, once again, I think you can use this all season long. You can keep your primary commanders or your, your go-tos on mind sharpening, and you can take your secondary and third tier commanders that you just don't normally get the time to level up. And you can send them to do simple things like sweeping. You can send them to do simple things like hitting a crossing, and you're going to see... Um, you're going to see an effect. Well, you're just going to see a nice accumulative effect of more EXP than normal, and you're going to get them up. You're, you're not going to get somebody to 50 doing this, but I would think that you might see maybe three to five extra levels over the course of a season based on the 10% uh, experience gain. Now, that, that's just doing a spitball math off the top of my head, but I would just say if a person is very active and... Um, they are they are the kind of person who would just for whatever reason are, wants to hit those crossings all season long, or they like to sweep constantly, or they just like to uh, hit 150s and 130s or even higher tiles just for the sake of hitting them. I mean, I do this. I, sometimes I will hit a 300 um, just for the sake of the XP, even if I'm at tile cap. If my barracks is solid and, and the PVP is not too heavy, I will hit it for just for, not free necessarily, but um, free in terms of not spending ability points. So I, I like this a lot, and I think it's something that can be used all season long. Looking at Linden, um, <sighs> I don't know. That one's just from gathering to extracted. I I don't play Linden for the faction trait. I will say that. I play Linden for the fact that... Um, I've kind of grown to like Elven Starts, and I would play Linden for the fact that they are the farthest faction away from the um, typical battlefield. And a lot of people think that's a detriment, but personally, I think it's fine, especially with the United Faction United Faction mechanic. Uh, being able to have your your faction Linden and maybe your ally faction build up your economy on the far western side of the map, and then keep all your military, your all your settlements, your forts, and your clusters on wherever the battlegrounds are is huge. Not having to worry about a dwindling economy, that's kind of why I like Linden. Build up your economy on the far side and then engage where you need to engage. And most of the time, people don't think that. They see like a 150, a 200, and they're like, "That's I, I want that, I'm going to take that. And then they may spend you know half the night, even though they're supposed to be PvPing, taking those tiles. And my problem with that is, is that um, on the surface, it creates an unstable economy because if you're if the battlefield is really back and forth, they're going to keep losing those tiles and picking up those tiles, and you're just you're spending more resources to me than it's worth. So I think this is useless, but I still like the the, the faction of Linden because of their strategic position in the sense of protecting their economy. Um, faction trait Angmar, I'm really glad for this. The siege damage increase is absurd to me. Elks already have the highest siege in the game, and Gothmog is running around buck nasty style, so uh, for them to have that siege damage bonus was silly to me. Um, I think this is nifty. I think it adds a... I don't know if it's worded as, as, as clearly as it could be, but I think the uh, overall gist is having higher survivability in your troops when they go to the apothecary. So I think that to me is perfect. The faction trait rune. Um, uh, this is definitely a nerf to me. Um, it's a buff in the sense that it's no longer against just non-player armies. So if you, I think it's a buff if, I guess to put, to put it this way, it's a, it's a nerf from being able to use your faction trait anywhere on the map. Um, it's a buff in the sense that this is now applicable to PvP, and it can be used throughout the entire duration of the season if you happen to find yourself battling on these lands. And I'm sure everyone's gone through a season very depressingly where you don't move from one region. 
and then you never want to you never want to see that region again. Like my season two, I spent sixty percent of it like in Darwinian, and I never wanted to go to Darwinian again. So I think it's a nerf as far as being able to use it everywhere. But I think it's a buff because now it now it impacts player versus player, which can be strong. I mean, Khaldun's already pretty strong. If you end up coming across a whole fellowship of, of Khaldun users, like good luck. He's already got really great mitigation and damage buff, and then you're going to add another 12% on top of that. All right, well, good luck to you, man. I'm good. Looking at the faction trade for Erebor, I honestly think this is pretty strong. And the reason I do is because Erebor is one of the few <clears throat> few unit quarters where I don't think I've ever seen a player not use dwarves. Unless they were going for some sort of roleplay meme uh, kind of aspect where it's like I'm only in Loth, I'm only going to use Elvish units, which is cool. But every tank that I've ever seen, is, at least for good side, uses rams and guardians at the very least. I, I, for King of Men, I, especially when they introduced the, uh, the the burn skin or the heat skin for the burn resistance, um, I used the Rams and Guardians even more so. And uh, granted, occasionally I'd even throw in Tower Guards uh, just to catch, just for an anti-cavalry opportunity. But um, yeah, I think this is, this is honestly perfect because not only does it affect your baseline units, but it affects your Iron Warriors, which already take forever to train. And I think this is really strong because on top of the Iron Warriors, which are a harder unit to get, you also have access to Depth Defenders, relatively speaking access, um, that are pretty popular. And obviously those are a Tier 4 unit, so those are harder to train. So you're getting minus 10% on the Depth Defenders, which might make them more usable. I know for myself, a lot of the times, even if I have the gold, I'm always kind of hesitant to train... Um, mercenary units, especially the higher tier ones, because they it costs so much to train them. They take forever. Then they have to march. So this is a nice thing that should impact at least if people want to use the depth defenders. And um, I also think it'd be cool for the Ram Riders. The Ram Riders are, are already, I think, the quickest tier three cav unit to train, and this is going to make them even faster. So if you if you don't want to train the Iron Warriors having like 10%, essentially 10% more Ram Riders. I look at it as if it takes 10% less to hire them, 10% less time to hire them, you're, you're likely going to have 10% more, you know, resources permitting. So I think that's a pretty strong buff, and I'm actually okay with that. Because most of the time, I've noticed a lot of Aramore players tend to run Ballins, Gimli's, Danes, Thorins, Dwalins, and they like to stack their Dwarven equipment, which means they're going to use Dwarf Troops. So I think that works really well as a thematic sort of Sons of Durin. Uh, looking at uh, Isengard here, I see that there was simply a, essentially a buff. And I think there really needs to be nothing said about that. I'm glad they didn't nerf it or change it. They just simply buffed it. Faction trade of Mordor, I've noticed a lot of people in Discord or the Forge talking about it, um, how strong this is going to be, and I'm glad to see that. Uh, I'm hoping some of these, mainly, in my opinion, the only ones that I think are really going to do that are going to be Arnor for the 10% increase, and Mordor, Arnor, Mordor, kind of funny how that, yeah. um, I'm hoping it brings more players back to these factions. Obviously, we don't want to lose players as a game. We want to build a community and retain it. So I am hoping that I will start seeing some full Mordor factions again, or at the very least, two solid fellowships. And I think this is a good way to incline people to play, is to offer them an, the ability to perhaps outscale their opponents, which, unfortunately, I think, you know, as we watch the movies, Mordor was always able to build a lot more troops than the Free Peoples had, so... I think this kind of a thematically makes sense. It allows you to outscale your opponents. Um, looking at Lothlorien, I, I kind of think this is a lot better um, as far as a game balance mechanic. I think a lot of people went into Lothlorien. I mean, they loved elves, they wanted eagles, etc. But there was definitely something to be said about having a 5% better base commander experience gain. Usually rushing uh, stone trolls for 5%. And 
and then getting the 10 percent from the ring which is 20 percent um and then then having the additional exp gain from mind sharp and so i definitely think that this almost was kind of a nerf because i remember seeing in several seasons lothlorian commanders once again it ties back into this if, if you're going to be able to increase your commanders at a higher rate than your enemy is there's a lot to be said about how much more effective you're going to be as a faction whether that's through mind sharpening whether that's through battling and sweeping um, or whether that's through just base actions in general but um, i think the fact of the matter is that they still really do have access to stone trolls most of the time they are going to see the 10 percent bonus from the ring and this is a nice way, the Elven Song. It's kind of, once again, I think this is sort of thematic, especially as Galadriel's a healer, Elrond's a healer, um, Arwen's a healer. Uh, this is a nice way to keep more troops on the field. And I think it works really well in tandem with how, how the fact that Elven units usually are squishier, especially the range stuff. I mean, the Heralds aren't that stellar either as far as taking casualties, but... Um, I think it works from a thematic standpoint, and I actually think it's very applicable throughout the entire length of the season. Um, the faction trait of Gondor, I honestly would have preferred they stay... I, I, actually, I would have preferred that they take this one, and they take this, and then just combine it. Construction, time, and cost, minus 5%. I think the gathering mechanic is very silly as far as... It, it's applicable early game for sure, um, but it's going to taper off eventually. And I think that's a bummer because um, I would rather, if it's going to taper off, I'd rather have it save me time and resources uh, over the cost of completing all the buildings than for it to strictly impact the gathering. And then for the Rohan trait, um, honestly, I would be okay if they would have merged it. If they would have said reposition speed plus 50%, march speed plus 5%. I don't think March speed plus 3% is that big of a difference. Um, I like the reposition speed. Definitely helps get people there faster. Um, and it's applicable all season long, which is nice. But it's not something I would say like, hey, go put two points into this as soon as you get it. Now, if the two points gave you faster fort, fort speed and general March speed, then yeah, I think the two points are worth it. So this to me is an... It's a it's just a clear buff because of how little the, the percentage was on the march speed, um, but I would have liked to have seen it combined together for both. So, yeah, we'll see. Well, I mean, I, I'm I'm out of a season right now in Bag End, so hoping that um, whatever faction I do go into, um, we're able to properly apply the faction trait and have success with it. So, I hope you guys have enjoy this video and I look forward to any feedback or commentary on what you think. So take care and thank you very much.